after we discovered this world is about as large as Tranquility Lane, and, well, yeah, that's pretty much all that happened last episode, to be honest. Welcome back to episode 6. Let's not waste any time and get straight into it. We begin with footage from an advertisement that the great Cooper Howard was paid to do by vault -Tec. and I did thoroughly enjoy this scene as it showed us a few things and bits and pieces of the vault. I was already aware of all of these features, but I was surprised that the writers were aware of them, bearing in mind they don't seem to know their asses from their elbows. We do also get somewhat of an exposition dump, in which we learn that West Tech were very close to Vault Tech, and that Cooper was actually a soldier wearing T-45 power armour, stationed in Alaska when Canada was being annexed. We also get a scene where Cooper and his wife, who works for Vault Tech, are discussing what would happen if they were to be forced to live in a vault. During this discussion, Cooper discovers that there are no pets allowed in the vault. He simply asks who made that decision, and who decided that they have to wear jumpsuits. He sees this as an attack on his freedoms as an individual, and states that he didn't spend a decade fighting in a war for those freedoms to be revoked. This is an excellent point. Why risk your life to fight for your freedoms and the freedoms of those around you, if that freedom is then stripped away at the whim of some suit? Her response is that she spent every day and night worrying about whether he was alive or not when he was at war. She answered his question by not answering his question and then guilt tripping him about how he abandoned her to go and fight for her freedom and to stop the commies invading her home and killing and possibly raping her. This either shows that she's a massive bitch and these writers don't understand how to script a strong female, or she's a villain and we're not meant to like her. This is all rather irrelevant information to the plot, but it does further Big Dog Gog's character like he wasn't already cool enough as the handsome, charismatic superstar. Now he's also a former Marine. Anyway, Cooper is becoming extremely suspicious of vault activities by this point and is invited to a meeting by a former army colleague of his. And at this meeting is Moldova. Yes, that's right, I am just as confused as you are. We are then taken back to Lucy and Maximus as they are being healed in this vault. This vault in question is Vault 4, the very vault that Cooper was advertising earlier on, and the woman that is currently talking to Lucy, apparently she was born on the surface. So it seems that this vault have citizens that were once living outside the vault, and I have to say, I'm getting a real Andale vibe from these vault dwellers. This is extremely unusual. The only time I have ever heard of this happening was when a certain chosen one earned citizenship to Vault City quite a while ago. Also, this woman's mother was supposedly a courier on the surface. So for those of you that are playing fan service bingo, make sure to tick that off, as we have another one to add to the list. She also states that she, like a number of other residents, was from Shady Sands, which is the capital of the NCR. The first time we see Shady Sands is in Fallout 1. It's the first town you come across, and it is just that, a tiny farming town on the outskirts of Los Angeles, ran by Aradesh and later taken over by his daughter, Tandy. Under Tandy, the NCR thrived and became the force in the wasteland west of the Colorado. The last we hear of the NCR is in 2281, during the events of Fallout New Vegas, when NCR, battling for the Hoover Dam for the second time with Kaiser's Legion, which faction won this battle is pretty much unknown, as there is no canonized ending for Fallout New Vegas. This show takes place in 2296, which is 15 years after the events of Fallout New Vegas take place. We find out that Shady Sands, the capital of the NCR, has been bombed and totally wiped out. In fact, Maximus was a survivor of this attack when he was a child. Bearing in mind that he looks to be in his late 20s now, and he looks to be around 10 as a child, we can speculate that the bombing of Shady Sands happened extremely soon after the events of Fallout New Vegas. But this is the problem. As of now, there is nothing definitive, so we can only speculate. So let's do that, shall we? Let's say that Shady Sands was bombed in 2281, immediately after the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, which would make sense due to Maximus's age, does that mean that Fallout New Vegas isn't canon? No, because for a governmental body as large as the NCR, which spanned the entirety of California, there would have been contingencies in place for if such an event were to occur, whether it be a war or a terror attack, 
there would be another city that could take over as the capital of the NCR and the government officials could simply migrate there. Even if the bombing of Shady Sands were to happen during the events of Fallout New Vegas, Interstate 15 is shut down by the NCR and used as a checkpoint due to a high number of caravan raids by bandits and the like. Well, that's what they told people. NCR have a real funny way of making tragedies work in their favour, don't they? The I-15 is just a long straight road that ran for hundreds of miles. In fact, it was nicknamed the Long 15. It was quite a way to travel to New Vegas, bearing in mind that the cars were no longer around and we are yet to see any horses. It's a long walk. If the bombing did indeed happen during the events of New Vegas, it would take a very long time before firstly anybody figured out what had happened and secondly they relayed the information to other NCR stations and checkpoints around the state. As we discover throughout the game, the NCR stations and checkpoints are hardly stable or reliable. They have constant issues with raiders, ghouls, traders, tech not working, scouting parties going missing. These NCR soldiers are not very well trained, which is a constant theme throughout Fallout New Vegas. The NCR are stretched really fucking thin and are trying to fight too many battles on too many fronts. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that even if Maximus is younger than we can reasonably assume here and that Shady Sand bombing happened just before or during the events of Fallout New Vegas, it does not decanonize Fallout New Vegas. It does state that the fall of Shady Sands happened in 2277 and then some point after that the bomb was dropped. The only question is what do they mean by the fall of Shady Sands as this is extremely ambiguous. Could they mean the government? Could they mean the society? We don't really know. So after that very deep and very interesting discussion let's get back to the equally deep and interesting show. Lucy asks Maximus if he wants to fuck. I'm not kidding. So she had sex with a radar within 15 minutes of meeting him, and now she's trying to fuck Maximus within a day. At least she's improving, I guess. Although she is now holding his hand and feeding him. It's been a day. I mean, it, it took me months to romance Cass for fuck's sake. She needs to teach me, because clearly I have no game. We then get a scene showing that the survivors of the Shady Sands bombing take part in an extremely creepy religious ceremony, praying to some sort of mother... No, not, 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 not that one. This mother in question happens to be Moldava. Lucy, understandably scared shitless, decides to explore the deeper levels of the vault to see what's going on and discovers what can only be described as some kind of a breeding farm. What for? I haven't got a fucking clue. But at least she specked into unarmed. That shit is useful. But that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. I hope you are all doing well. And as always, take care.